No secret, the Fed hiked by 25 basis points, something we were all expecting, but we are going to be dissecting Jerome Powell's comments. I will give you a quick summary and breakdown of what Jerome Powell said, what I think, and what the implications are for the market. We are also going to be looking at the S&P 500 chart, and we are very close to all-time highs, both on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, about 6 to 7% away. So I think a lot of people think it's inevitable that we get to all-time highs very quickly. However, if you look historically, there have been a number of times that we have actually seen a correction before getting to all-time highs. This actually happened in 2020 when we were very close to crossing all-time highs. We saw an 8.5% correction. This also happened in 2019. Right before we tagged all-time highs, we saw a 5% correction. 2018, we were very close to all-time highs, and we saw an 8.5% correction. And you get the picture. So I'm going to go over what I expect from the market in the short to midterm. Like I said, we're also going to go over Jerome Powell's comments, what that means for the market, and then I will show you what plays we are actually taking, what plays we have actually taken. One I gave out on the live stream yesterday, and it was on Meta. Meta's earnings actually came in really good. However, as I told you on the live stream, Meta's IV crush is usually 39% after earnings. And most of the time, Meta doesn't make the expected move. Meta's premiums were paying an insane amount. So we actually opted for a selling strategy. We sold an iron condor on Meta, trying to take advantage of the theta decay, as well as the huge IV crush that Meta normally sees. We just closed that trade for 71%. This was overnight. Some of the easiest money you'll make is on option selling strategies. We also sold sold a covered call on Meta. We sold a 330 covered call as well. If you want access to all of our trades and analysis, options, futures, long-term stock holdings, as you know, I invested in Oxy. I also invested in XLF, which has seen an insane run-up after the banking fears. We bought the fear on the banks. Link is in the description below. Click on the link. Make sure you join us in the academy. If you don't want to miss out on these trades, let's get right into it. So in summary, Jerome Powell raised rates by 25 basis points. That was expected. If you took a look at the at the uh, at Fed funds tracker, it was a 99% probability bet that Jerome Powell was going to raise by 25 basis points. But what we were looking for were Jerome Powell's comments. So obviously he gave the lip service about us needing to be more restrictive, how inflation is sticky, how it's something that can't be ignored. And, and, you know, you can't think that just because inflation year over year went from 9% to 3%, uh, according to the last reading, that that is something that, that you can ignore, that there's more restriction coming. He said, don't be surprised if we do consecutive rate hikes and another rate hike in September. Now, here's why I think he he's saying this. You guys know if you follow this channel what my what my thinking is on on why the Fed is raising rates, even though inflation is coming down at historic levels. Yes, inflation is calculated differently now. However, you know, if we are to take their calculations at face value, inflation is coming down at historic levels. So why would the Fed want to potentially break the economy and break the market? by doing a fe- another Fed rate hike if inflation truly is coming down. Well, this comes down to a couple of things. One, wages. Wages are at historic highs here, at least 15 years high. This is according to the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. So this is you know, an official wage tracker here. I, I believe that the Fed wants wages to come down. They definitely do want people unemployed, more people unemployed. I don't think they want a mass of people unemployed, but they want wages to come down, come hell or high water. So even though inflation is coming down, CPI is coming down year over year from 9% to 3% year over year growth, it, 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 it doesn't matter. They want to see this go down. They want to see unemployment go up. And they also want to see core come down. You might not be able to... Actually, yeah, you can see this. They want to see core come down. Core reading was 4.8. Now, core just means less food and energy. So it's a CPI minus food and energy. Core was one of the stickiest ones. Services inflation is included in core. However, we are down to 4.8. So the Fed funds rate currently is above five. So we are definitely above core as well as above CPI. But I do think that they want to see that slammed uh, further, that, that core inflation. They want to see it slammed to the ground even more. They want to see wages go down. 
because wages are putting pressure on inflation, but they're also putting pressure on corporations. And I believe, in, in based on experience from reading these things historically, that the obviously there is a an unspoken alliance between government and corporations. And I think that, you know, assisting corporations in getting wages down because the employee right now has all of the power and assisting corporations getting inflation down is better for for corporate earnings, uh, you know, will be better for the economy, according to the Fed, depending on, on how you measure it, right? If corporate earnings continue to go up, that signifies some sort of health in, in the economy as well. And another reason that the Fed is still raising rates is because they want yields to go up. Yes, yields are going crazy right now. The The, the difference between the 10-year and the two-year is at you know, historic levels here. We're getting back to an insane yield curve inversion at almost minus one between the 10-year and two-year. Now, why would the Fed want yields to go up? Think about it. The bond market is just a market like any other, right? So a lot of inexperienced people think that, oh, when the Fed raises rates, then that means that yields automatically go up. Not necessarily. The bond market is a market like any other. So the bond yields are based on how bond traders are trading bonds, right? And if the expectation is that the Fed is not going to raise rates anymore. So if the, if Jerome Powell came out yesterday and said, this will definitively be the last rate hike, expect no more rate hikes. What are bond traders going to do? They're going to pour into bonds, right? And when they pour into bonds, that is when yields actually crash. The more demand there are for bonds, the less the bonds are going to yield. So if yields crash, that means that mortgages, uh, car loans, et cetera, big ticket items that base their interest rates off of bond yields, those interest rates are going to drop too. So what happens when interest rates on homes drop? What happens when interest rates on cars drop? Well, that increases demand for those big ticket items. So the Fed is terrified of telling people definitively, even if it's true that this is the last rate hike, right? Imagine they they don't hike anymore in September and you know ongoing, which is now actually the current expectation if you look at the, the Fed funds futures bets. 78% likely that the Fed just holds it here and that's it, right? They don't raise anymore. But if they come out and say that, then bond traders are going to pour into bonds trying to take advantage of the high yields that are likely going to be capped here. And so bond yields are going to drop if bond investors pour into, into bonds. And that means that interest rates on houses and cars will drop. That means that the demand for those things will go back up thereby threatening uh, inflation. So that is essentially why the Fed continues to hike. They're trying to make sure that core comes down. They're trying to make sure that wages come down, and they're trying to make sure that they keep bond yields elevated. And this is why inverted yield curves and, and high bond rates eventually lead us to recessions. Because when yields are spiking like crazy, that puts pressure on the economic system. And when there is that much pressure on the economic system, especially in a highly leveraged economic system like ours, that is when things tend to break, right? Bond yields dictate everything uh, that is credit related in our system, both corporate and consumer alike. So that is essentially what uh, the, the the Fed is doing. They're trying to give the air that they are they are still going to raise rates aggressively, even though now, Fed funds futures betters are betting that that was the last rate hike. Now, according to me, what do I think? Well, I think obviously it's data dependent. However, if you take a look at the data that came out today as of the time of this recording. Rick, the numbers, sir. Yes. Well, we're a few seconds early, but I'm telling you, we have a litany of numbers. We have a whole line. We're going to try to cover all of them. Of course, initial jobless claims is always a good place to start. Expecting 235,000, Andrew, 221,000 is what we receive. So jobless claims came in much lower than expected. And if you fast forward, real GDP came in at 2.4% growth versus 2%. So GDP came in much higher than expected jobless claims came in much lower than expected. So that puts additional pressure, again, 
on wages. That puts additional pressure again on inflation. And it will likely lead to the Fed probably having to do another rate hike if these numbers come out strong again in August. Remember that the Fed doesn't have a meeting in August. August is when Jackson Hole happens. The next Fed meeting is September. So between now and September, a lot of data can change. But so far, the data is tracking extremely bullishly for the economy, which will put pressure on the Fed to raise yet again. So in my view, it's too early to tell whether the Fed is going to raise again or not. This could be the last rate hike. Uh, depending on the data that comes out in, in August. We will have two more uh, data sets. We will have August and September before the next September FOMC meeting. And we will see, right, if if it, it shows that there is a slow growth in the economy between now and then, then maybe the Fed pauses. However, if we look at earnings, earnings are killing it. If you look at Netflix, if you look at Meta, if you look at Microsoft, they are still killing it with earnings, right? So in my view, Things are, are looking like the Fed will likely have to do another rate hike a, as of late, right? Obviously, things can change, so don't hold me to that. Now, in terms of the S&P 500, I do think it's inv inevitable that we get to all-time highs. It's inevitable that we get to 4,800. It's inevitable on the NASDAQ that we get to, let's look at the NDX uh, index, sorry, instead of QQQ. It's an wee, what am I doing? It's inevitable on the on the Nasdaq that we get to uh 1668, 16, right? However, it's very common as I stated at the outset, it's very common for us to fall just shy of all-time highs and see a correction. And again, if you've been following this channel, you know that uh in my view I think that we will get a summer correction. I think August, September are generally bearish months. Uh, and I think that that, that that sets us up for a potential correction. Uh, and as I said, a month after hitting a bull market, we tend to see a correction that is very common that we see a pullback to a correction. So somewhere in the 5 to 10% range uh, before continuing on the bull market. And I, I expect that to happen. Also, if you've been watching this analysis, you'll know that, that I was saying July is historically uh, one of the most bullish months. So if you look at the screenshot here, you can see QQQ, the last 16 Julys going all the way back to 2008 have been bullish. So I expected July to actually end green. We are now coming up on the end of July. The last trading day of July is actually tomorrow, July 28th, as of the time of this recording. Actually, no, wait, it's Monday the 31st. Okay, so two more trading days left in July. And as I stated before, once we hit a bull market, it's very unlikely that we fall back to bear. So in my view, if you are looking to enter the market, you want to do so on major pullbacks if and when we get them. Wow, look at this bearish candle on, on S&P. This is a bearish engulfing candle if it holds today. The market hasn't yet closed. So, But yeah, that is, uh, that is the analysis so far, is that I do think we will ev eventually hit all-time highs uh, you know, within by the end of the year. I think we do see a summer pullback coming, 5 to 10% range. I do think those pullbacks are viable. Uh, the economy still looks strong. I do think that the Fed wants yields to continue going up. And if the economy continues to act in a strong manner between now and September, I do think the Fed does another rate hike. But until then, uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to sell puts on these pullbacks. Selling puts and selling calls and selling iron condors has been an excellent strategy it's so much easier to sell options than than to buy them. And otherwise, we are trading futures, day trading futures on, on a day-to-day -day basis. We had a 20-point short on the S&P 500 today on the S&P 500 futures. That's $1,000 per contract. So make sure you sign up. Link is in the description if you want to learn how to navigate any market using options, using futures, using long-term stock picks, et cetera. Link is in the description below. It is well worth it. I guarantee that you won't be disappointed. Click the link in the description, apply to join the Academy. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Fed. Do you think that they were uh, hawkish? Do you think they weren't hawkish enough? Let me know if you think that we are going to get a Fed rate hike again in September, or was that it? And let me know what you think about the current state of the market. Are we going to hit all-time highs 
Are we going to see, are, are we going to go back to a bear market, for instance? I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below. Otherwise, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.